All right, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to create a particle effect, kind of like what you would see hovering over perhaps a jump pad or a teleporter, just sort of a um, an interesting-looking science fiction effect. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So let's go over here and go into our actor class browser and make sure we have the emitter selected and just add an emitter in, just like we did in the last lesson. Now, this is not going to be a very difficult effect to create. So let's select this guy, move him to about right about there and make sure he's lying on the ground so yep something like that okay now let's make sure our real-time preview is turned on so we can see what's going on then we can come into the properties here go into the emitter tab add one just like we did last time and we do want to create a sprite emitter in this case so create a new sprite emitter and come down to texture now of course we have this weird looking horrible looking texture so if we come into our texture browser Let's choose something that looks halfway decent. Now, again, we're doing a portal type effect, so any of these flares that we have here will work fine. I kind of like the look of that one right here. So we can select that one, come over to Texture, and just say Use. Okay, cool. So look at that. Now we have something created. Fancy. And, of course, we're going to come down to Size. You know, that doesn't look too good. That looks bad. Yeah, yes. I'd have to agree. Yeah, definitely. So let's take the size, and again, we only need to change X because we have uniform size turned on. So maybe something like that. Of course, it's going to be hard to see at this point because the icon is still being displayed and it's behind it. So let's go ahead and add some velocity to them. So come down to the velocity tab, come down to start velocity range, and because this is Z up world, come down to Z and add a little bit of velocity to them. So something like that. Again, this is something that you can just tweak on your own. Um, oh, look at that. So something slow, kind of yeah. fading up. Now, it looks like we're going to need to spread that effect out a little bit, because like a single trail of particles just isn't that convincing. No, it looks really bad. So if we move this over a little bit, and then come up to our Location tab. Now, remember in the last lesson when we did this right here, this waterfall type effect, mm -hmm. we used the... Um, come down here, we use the PTLS sphere. In this case, we want to uh, shoot out from a rectangular area. So in this case, the box is going to work perfectly. So if we come down to start location range, we can define a square area or a box. So in this case, we just want it to be a 2D plane, so we'll just leave Z set to 000. zero, zero. Okay. Zero, zero, excuse me. No, so, I got you. Yeah. So inside of here, what we can do is set, let's say we wanted a 40 by 40 square. The max is going to be 20, min is going to be negative 20. For y, same thing, 20 and negative 20. That makes sense, right? Absolutely. So with that, check it out. Now we're emitting from a 40 by 40 square. Oh, very nice. So isn't that looking interesting? It's starting to look pretty cool. So now, another thing, look at that. They're just kind of shooting up and then, well, popping away. Mm -hmm. How can we change this, Zach? Uh, probably give them a little bit of a fade in and a fade out. Yeah, that would look a whole lot better. So we can come into fade, fading, excuse me, turn on fade in, and set the fade in end time to about 0.2. So if you look down here, it's nice and fading in. And then when it gets up to here, we want it to fade out. Now, again, we need to come down to our time tab, the very bottom here, check our lifetime range to see what we're when we're dying. And you know what? Right now, it's always living four seconds. That mm, doesn't have a whole range or anything, so it doesn't look very realistic. So we can come in here and maybe change this to, um, ch leave this at four, and set this to maybe 2.5. So now it has a random range where it dies. So, so now it's a little bit different. Okay. Maybe, maybe a little bit higher. <laughs> Try not to get too picky, but you know. So something like that. Then when it gets up to this area right here, it fade, um, just directly dies. So we can come back up to the fading tab, and yep, you guessed it, turn on fade out. And fade out start time, again, look down at the time here, and around 3.5, so starting fade time about 3 seems logical. So with that on, now it fades out, looks oh, a whole cool. lot better. Another thing is maybe we want the size to be a little bit larger um, difference here. So maybe set this up to 20. So now we have a lot more a lot variation. More, yeah, a lot more variation in our size. Yeah, it looks a whole lot better. Now, another thing that we didn't really touch on in the last lesson is, well, we touched on it a little bit, but in this case I'm going to do something a little bit different. Under the color tab, we have color scale. So what if I wanted to say, 
maybe start out with the color yellow and fade to the color red. Okay. Or fade to the color blue, let's say. What we can do is use the color scale here, and you'll notice that color scale is in a lot of uh, scales are in a lot of different places. And what this allows us to do is start out at say the beginning of a particle's life as a certain value, and at the end of the particle's life end at a different value. And you can create a whole gradient, if you will, with these scales. So oh, very cool. Yeah, it's very very powerful. So if we come in here and then we can add, so we've just added the first slot of our gradient. So inside of here we can say relative time. This is the start of the particle's life. What do we want the, the color to be? Well, let's just pick a color. Come in here, click the browse here, and come up to, let's say, we want it to start out as yellow. Oh, nice. You don't need to enter numeric values. No, you can you actually don't. choose a color. Yes, very, very nice. So, of course, it will show it in here if you wanted it to. Sure. Which is nice. So let's add another gradient, and the relative time is going to be 1. So by the end of the particle's life, we want the color to be this color here. So let's So relative time goes from 0 to 1. Right. 0 being the birth of the particle and 1 being the death. Exactly. Cool. So let's say we want the end to be blue. Now, you'll not see any difference here. Hmm, what's wrong? Well, you need to turn on use color scale. Otherwise, well, nothing happens. So if we switch this on... You're just doing off. that by double clicking, by the way. Yes, I am double clicking. So now look at it. It starts out at that yellow color that we chose, fades to blue, and then dies off. Very cool. So if we wanted to, we could even come in here, and just to stress a little bit more, come in here and say add. Now, maybe we wanted to reach blue at half of the particle's life. So we can say relative point time, 0.5. And then the last entry that we have here, set this to 1. And let's set this to what color, Zach? Uh, try red. All right, so let's pick a solid red color. And now if we come in here, check it out. Starts out at green, fades to blue, and it's going to die off at red. However, it's fading out at the moment, so let's just turn this off so it's a little bit easier to see. Starts out at blue, ends with red, as you can see. So very at the very cool. end of its life, it's red. That's awesome. Yes, yeah, very, very cool looking. So what you got is looking pretty cool. Go ahead and switch your fade out back on. All right, so we can, that's, all right, something like that. Yeah, but your effect is a little bit faint right now. I'm thinking maybe it could use some more particles. Hey, that's a good idea. So let's come into the general tab here and maybe set this to 50. So look at that. Oh, yeah. So that looks a lot better. Yeah, a lot more interesting. So I guess with that, that pretty much, we didn't really introduce a whole lot of new attributes, if you will, in this lesson. Right, but I mean, we used a sprite emitter with the last effect, and we used a sprite emitter with this effect as well. Right, but we did introduce the color scale, which is a very powerful feature. And again, if we look in all of these other ones, let's pick one, size. We can change, there's a size scale as well, which will allow us to do the same thing. Over the particle's lifetime, start at, say, 0, and end at, say, 1. Don't just tell me, show me. Okay. So let's come in here and say size scale. All right, add. Let's say we want him to start out at relative time zero, set his size to one. Okay. And so that would be at his birth. He has a size of one. Right. Cool. So it's the default size. Let's add another one. So at the end of his life, maybe we want the size to be five. So right. something really, really big. And again, we need to come down here and say use size scale, set this to true. So now check it out. They start out really, really regular and actually one thing that I did not set up here is right here use regular size scale we need to set this to false so that it starts using our new set oh, here oh wow check that out so it starts out at regular size and then over its life gets bigger and bigger and bigger I'll reverse that baby I want to see what happens if they go from big to being small okay so set this to five and then set the relative size back to one Okay, maybe five is a little bit big. Maybe bring it down to like three. Okay. Or two or something. Oh, yeah, baby. Hey, see? That is a cool looking effect. Now it looks pretty cool because it's got sort of like that flare at the bottom and it kind of trickles and fades out as you go down. Yeah, kind of cool. Yeah, very nice effect. So I guess with that, that's going to wrap up this lesson. And in the next lesson, we can show you guys how to create that torch that we have up there. Cool. So that's going to wrap up this lesson. Thanks, everyone.